on the practical sort of pragmatic sense, uh, if we zoom in on jobs, we can look at programmers because it seems like AI systems are currently doing incredibly well at programming and increasingly so. So a lot of people that uh, program for a living, love programming, are worried they will lose their jobs. How worried should they be, do you think? And what's the right way to uh, sort of adjust to the new reality and ensure that you survive and thrive as a human in the programming world? Well, it's interesting that programming, and it's again counterintuitive to what we thought uh, years ago, maybe that some of the skills that we think of as harder skills are turned out maybe to be the easier ones for various reasons. But, you know, coding and math, because you can create a lot of synthetic data and verify if that data is correct. Mm -hmm. So b because of the nature of that, it's easier to make things like synthetic data to train from. Um, it's also an area, of course, we're all interested in because as programmers, right, to help us and get faster at it and more productive. So I think the for the next era, like the next five, 10 years, I think what we're going to find is people who are kind of embrace these technologies become almost at one with them, um, whether that's in the creative industries or the technical industries, will become sort of superhumanly productive, I think. So the great programmers will be even better, but they'll be even 10x even what they are today. And because there you'll be able to use their skills to utilize the, the tools to the maximum uh, you know, exploit them to the maximum. And um, so I think that's what we're going to see in the next domain. Um, so that's going to cause quite a lot of change, right? And so that's coming. A lot of people benefit from that. So I think one example of that is if coding becomes easier, um, it becomes available to many more creatives to do more. Uh, and uh, But I think the top programmers will still have huge advantages in terms of specifying, going back to specifying what the architecture should be, the question should be, how to guide these um, uh, coding assistants in a way that's useful, you know, check whether the code they produce is good. So I think there's plenty of... Um, uh, headroom there for the foreseeable, you know, next few years. So I think there's there's several interesting things there. One is there's a a lot of imperative to just get better and better consistently of using these tools. So they are they're like riding the wave of the improvement, improving models yes. versus like competing against them. Yeah. But sadly, but that's the the nature of of life on Earth. Um, there could be a huge amount of value to certain kinds of programming at the cutting edge and less value to other kinds. For example, it could be like, you know, front end hmm. web design might uh, be more amenable to, to, to as, as you mentioned, to generation hmm. uh, by AI systems and maybe, for example, game engine design or something yeah. like this, or backend design or, or guiding systems in high performance situations, high performance programming type of design decisions that might be extremely valuable, hmm. but it, it will shift yeah. where the humans are needed most. And that's scary for people to yeah, adjust. I, can, I think that's right. That At any time where there's a lot of disruption and change, yeah. you know, and we've had this, it's not just this time, we've had this in many times in human history with the internet, uh, mobile, but before that was the industrial revolution. Um, and it's going to be one of those eras where there will be a lot of change. I think there'll be new jobs we can't even imagine today, just like the internet created. And then those people with the right skill sets to ride that wave will become incredibly uh, valuable, right, those skills. But maybe people will have to relearn or adapt a bit uh, their current skills. And it's the, the thing that's going to be harder to deal with this time around is that I think what we're going to see is something like probably 10 times the impact the industrial revolution had and but 10 times faster as well right so instead of 100 years it takes 10 years and so that's going to make it you know it's like 100x uh the impact and the speed combined so that's what's i think going to make it more difficult for society to 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 deal with and it's good there's a lot to think through and i think we need to be discussing that right now and i i you know I encourage top economists in the world and philosophers to start thinking about um uh, how should is society going to be affected by this and what should we do including things like um you, you know uh, universal basic provision or some Something like that, where a lot of the um, increased productivity uh, gets shared out and distributed uh, to society, um, and maybe in the form of surface services and other things. Where if you want more than that, you still go and get some incredibly rare skills and things like that, um, and and make yourself unique. Um, but uh, uh, but there's a basic provision that is provided. And if you think of government as a technology, there's also interesting questions, not just in the economics, but just politics. 
how do you design a system that's responding to the rapidly changing times such that you can represent the different pain that people feel from the different groups and how do you reallocate resources in a way that uh, addresses that pain and represents the hope and the pain and the fears of different people uh, in a way that doesn't lead to division because politicians are often really good at sort of fueling the division and using that to get elected, the other, defining the other and then saying, yeah. that's bad. And so based on that, I think that's often counterproductive to leveraging a rapidly changing technology, how to help the world flourish. So we almost uh, need to improve our political systems as well rapidly if you think of them as a technology definitely and i think i think we'll need new governance uh, structures institutions probably to help with this transition so i think political philosophy and political science is going to be key uh to that but i think the number one thing first of all uh, is to create more abundance of resources right mm -hmm. then there's the so that's the number one thing increase productivity get more resources maybe eventually get out of the zero sum situation then the second question is how to use uh, those resources and distribute those resources but yeah you can't do that without having that abundance first